This is Endurance Nation. Hello there and welcome to another episode of the Endurance Nation podcast. I'm Coach Patrick, your host on these different episodes that cover interviews with our members and with industry leaders, as well as regular topics that are pertinent to endurance athlete success. This time around, it's getting close to the fall, and I wanted to let you know that our season is kicking off on November 1st. That's right. Endurance Nation works through seasons, and our winter training program kicks off in earnest on November 1st. If you head over to endurancenation.us, you'll be able to enter your email address to get all the details about what's coming up and learn why starting in November is super important and how we can work with you over the course of the winter using our patented out-season program and the subsequent training phases of the year to create the conditions and knowledge you need to be your better and faster self. And if you're ready to get started early, can't wait till November 1st, we have a durability program for you too. So once again, head over to endurancestation.us, enter that email, learn more about what we are doing here over the course of the year, why Endurance Station is different, why training with a team is the way to go, and how we can help make you successful. Until then, I look forward to hearing from you online somewhere and sit back here now and enjoy this episode. Endurance Nation. Hey everyone, Coach Patrick here from Endurance Nation over at endurancenation.us. Go over there, enter your email address, get our newsletter with weekly updates and once a month deep dives into key topics. Our goal, as always, whether it's with these casts, with our newsletters, with our content on YouTube and our podcast, etc., is to make you a smarter athlete. Smarter athletes are faster athletes. Smarter athletes work smarter, not harder. Um, and when you do work harder on top of your smarter, it's even better. I don't even know what that is. That's like sharder right? Smarter and harder. Look at that. New word for you guys. New word of the day. I'm going full rally cap. This is my last video of the day, so I'm obviously losing my mind. But I do want to talk to you a little bit today, speaking of losing my mind, about, about ultra running. Now, for first caveat, I'm not an ultra runner. Longest run I've ever done has been 40 miles, um, and that was on my own. And uh, every five miles, I stopped and changed my socks. So not really a race, just a long run. Um, but we have plenty of ultra runners inside the team, and I've listened to them, and we've cataloged some of their insights, et cetera. So I want to share some with you, but at the same time, encourage you to come over to administration.us, create your membership, meet the team, all the crazy ultra runners doing <laughs> you know, 50 Ks up to like 500 miles of running across multiple days in deserts and things like that. It all happens here inside the team. There's a great repository of resources and people being supportive and help you solve the problems you need to solve to tackle these incredible challenges that you want to solve with your own two feet. So that said, here is an introductory list of five key things that you want to know about your ultra running experience uh, that I would encourage you to explore as you start to transition to doing it, right? Ready? Let's do this. Okay, you're more ready than I am because I do not want to do an ultra run despite everyone telling me I should. Just got to wait till I lose a couple pounds, right? Like I think for me, the durability is the biggest piece and I got to get that right. So number one, first important thing, pick a friendly first race. In other words, don't let your friends pick a race for you <laughs> because they'll pick something crazy. But really for you, pick a race that makes sense. So friendly means it's nearby. So it's something you can even go practice on, hopefully, have a sense of what the terrain looks like, or maybe even talk to someone who's done the race. Friendly means it's very similar to the distances you've done. So a 50K is great because it's longer than a traditional marathon, but it's not 50 miles. Like we're not adding another 20 miles on top of it. That's just insanely hard, right? So start off small. Um, friendly means also that it's a small field, um, but it's hopefully a loop course. Um, and it's not too hilly. Like we want some hills, but you don't have to go big hills to do an ultra. It's just meant to be longer than a marathon. So don't reach too big with that first one. Be smart, be patient. There's time and plenty of time left to go longer. So really make sure you're picking that first race right. There's some great ultra race resites, resource sites out there, but also ask your friends, ask your teammates, put it up on Facebook. Someone in your crew is an ultra runner and they'll be happy to give you some general advice on good events and what sets one event apart from another. Sometimes it's hard to tell, but there are definitely a, there is definitely a dichotomy of events based on support, um, based on um, the design and the rollout, um, based on the course markings that really set certain events apart. And those are the ones you want to find and support with your running dollars. Okay, number two. 
Durability before race training. When people sign up for a race, any race, any distance, they want to start training for that race. But in the case of ultra running, it's really important that we spend time early in the block of training for you to work on durability. That means running frequency and running consistency. So it's not so much about did I do a long run of X distance this week in preparation for my long race of X times seven distance later this year. No, it means that we're spending the time building resilience in our body. So it means doing um, frequent workouts, um, you know, back-to-back runs on certain days or double run days like Saturday, Sunday. We have a variety of ways with our ultra running plans to help you develop the durability you need to be successful. But remember that durability is also a function of rest. So doing some work and doing some rest to recover and adapt also becomes important. And so ironically, as much as you're thinking about the race and those big miles that you do in the last few weeks before the race, in reality, the first couple of weeks, the first four to six weeks of any training program, ultra running or otherwise, is actually the most critical because that's your entry point. That's you getting into the pool. Some people like to just jump into the pool. Some people get in very, very slowly. We want some sort of space in the middle where we can move into the pool and be fully immersed in the pool in about four-ish weeks. Um, but we don't want to jump in such that we end up with over fatigue or some sort of um, injury or need for recovery just at the point in time we're meant to be moving forward. Right? How do we get this durability? Well, my friends, that's number three. Consistency is your mantra. So day in, day out, doing the runs, doing the work, sticking to your schedule allows you to build that durability. And it all comes from consistency. So it's less about running for a certain time or running for a certain distance. It's more about my job is to run seven times this week across six days. That means one of these days I'm going to do two runs or maybe two of these days I do two runs and that gives me two days off, whatever that may be for you. But then idea essentially is that you have a schedule, you can stick to it and we follow that schedule in a repeat fashion as a means through which we build durability and strength, we also are able to factor in some recovery mechanisms as well. So don't let your durability get away by your lack of consistency. So people will say, ah, you know, I was going to run six miles today, but life got away. I can only run one or one and a half. It's not worth it. No, from ultra running perspective, it's totally worth it. Like all those runs matter. Even if it's not the run that you wanted to have, running on the day you were supposed to run, even for a short distance, even as short as 15 minutes can make a big difference for you. Okay, so stick to that consistency. It's how we build our durability. All right, two more to go. Number four, practice on race like terrain. This is a little closer. You know, this is between six and eight weeks out to the race itself. But transitioning from where you're running has been predominantly happening to being more race specific, right? So if it's a rocky course, some rocks. If it's trails, trails. Um, If it's high altitude, bonus if you can get to a place like that. If it's hot, let's find the warmer parts of the day. Uh, We want to put yourself in a space where you are using the last couple of weeks of your training here in the ultra area to really dial in those nuances that make a big difference in your experience, right? Whether or not you're hydrated actually has massive outcomes, massive differential between hydrated and unhydrated in terms of ability to sustain effort. And so we do this race specific work in the last block, the last one and a half to two months to your race, simply so that we have the opportunity to refine everything. Now, of course, race day won't be exactly like you had in training. So we need to be flexible a little bit with how things are going to work out. But overall, this will really do a great job of preparing you to handle the terrain from making the right decision at the right time, which is often something that doesn't come naturally to people, but we'll have to practice and get good at. All right, good. And the last point here on the ultra running journey start is run with others, run with others to learn faster. And there's a bunch of different ways you can do that. One is just to join a group and just run, right? Since it's ultra, it's not about speed. It's just running. You can run 12 minute miles and it still counts, right? Um, you should run with others also because they'll take you to new places. So you'll be in new places because they know places to run or they have experiences. They want to show you something. That's great because more often than not, we get stuck into our own rut. And with running, that area is actually significantly reduced because our known area that's appropriate for this sport is actually very small. Um, And as a result, it's easy to put ourselves in a box and miss out on great opportunities that someone would have told us if we've been hanging out with them. We might even run with them, right? Um, And then last but not least, just learning from being alongside people. You'll see how folks handle heat, um, rain. You'll see how folks handle terrain changes, 
uh, upset stomachs, et cetera. These are questions that you won't really ever have to ask because you're going to see your teammates and the other people inside your ultra run community doing the things that allow them to make adjustments, stay on track, keep pushing forward. Um, and you'll learn just simply by watching that. And that's really important. Um, I think people discount the social side and inside endurance nation, obviously community of endurance athletes. We recognize the value here and want to celebrate it as well. So don't count yourself out by saying, you know what, I've got to run all these long runs alone. If you do so, you're taking a healthy amount of, um, growth and opportunity off the table and making that journey significantly harder simply because you don't want to plug in. So I can't say it enough. I certainly hope you do plug in. The ultra running community is super fun, super vibey. Um, and it's an opportunity for you to push your limits in the way that you think is the best way possible across all manner of terrain from Epic as we have now in season to just more modest, which is more of the winter season uh, where we can extend those marathons for just a little bit longer so we can get in that 50k. All right. If you've got questions about ultra running or making that transition to ultra running, please head over to facebook.com forward slash insurance station. Ask your questions inside the box there. I'll be sure to have one of our ultra running athletes answer you. Otherwise, consider joining us when the team opens up in October, December, or April for our half full and race prep seasons only per the order. Um, you can come in and, uh, you know, we'll match you up with what the, uh, you know, kind of route looks like for you in terms of your training. And we'll get you started right away with your work so we can make sure we're on track ready to tackle the ultra race when it arrives. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in, folks. Coach Patrick here. Hope you enjoyed this cast this week. I'll be back again later on with more opportunities and more information about the team. Please remember, EnduranceStation.us, you can sign up for the newsletter for all the latest updates. Otherwise, I'll see you soon. Take care. For more information about Endurance Nation, visit us online at endurancenation.us. The provided music is from the Podshow Podsafe Music Network. Check it out at music.podshow.com.